On January 4th, Muskogee Creek Nation Principal Chief James Floyd vetoed a bill that would reinstate Muskogee Media as an independent statutory executive agency. This places Muskogee Media under the direct control of the Office of the Principal Chief. In a statement posted to the MCN Public Relations Facebook page, the administration outlined the rationale for the veto. Muskogee Media spoke with Principal Chief James Floyd about his decision to veto the legislation. Chief, in your objections, you stated that only seven of the 18 positions at, are dedicated to news reporting at Muskogee Media. The remaining 11 positions consist of administrative and technical support staff, a graphic design division that generates revenue and lays out the newspaper, um, and ad sales associates that generate revenue for the department. Um, all of these employees are Native American citizens, with only two being non-Creek. Um, what would your plan be for the remaining 11 positions? Uh, they may be worried about being fired, laid off, liquidated, any of that. What is your plan for those remaining 11 positions? Well, several things are going on regarding the, other than the news media part of Muskogee Media. Um, we have a need for graphics design and printing reproduction within the tribe. We have two other departments that I guess have small ventures into that area. Um, what I've asked staff to look at is if we co-located them somewhere, could we gain a, a better efficiency, keep everybody employed, and provide the products and services that people need? In other words, making it in another department of its own or putting it in We're looking at the possibility of having a department that would serve the nation um, like in public relations, in tourism, recreation, uh, the other needs of departments of the tribe that um, needs printing, production, graphics, design work. And so it would be combined and include those employees. Another objection that you outlined in your message was that you had uh, a, a, a wish that Muskogee Media be submitting quarterly reports to the executive branch. Um, have you ever received a quarterly report from Muskogee Media? In, I think, the last year, upon request, I think we've received, there's been two to three that have been submitted. They go into the quarterly report that the principal chief presents to the National Council. Um, the issue that we have and the issue that I'd raised with the council is that as an independent agency, other independent agencies come and present to the National Council because there's a shared um, oversight by the National Council and the principal chief with independent agencies. We've not had that with Muskogee Media. I feel it needs to be there. Um, just as we previously discussed, the graphics design, kind of the quasi-business venture was something that we really weren't aware of. And those types of things, I think it, it could do better if we had oversight over it, um, or at least discussed how it could grow, and um, we just have not had that discussion. Were there any meetings with you and your office specifically with former leadership at Muskogee Media, and I'm talking about Sterling Cosper as far as some of these financial oversight concerns that you had? Did you guys have any kind of talks or dialogue about any of those concerns that you had with him? Other than short conversations or emails? No, we didn't. Okay. Another objection uh, that you outlined um, in there and uh, in, in your message, I think there was a, a typo because it, it referenced NCA 18-180 when I believe it was, uh, when it was meant, meant to reference NCA 18-184 was actually what you were vetoing. Um, but it said, um, that it would return financial oversight to a single individual, the Muskogee Media Manager. Um, in the original wording of the bill, it created the hierarchy, of course, of the editorial board. Um, and that editorial board would have oversight of the Muskogee Media Manager, um, and that would include the budget. Um, in addition, Muskogee Media also goes through um, the annual budget hearings with the National Council and justifies the budget, everything like that. Um, apart from the already established legislative and executive review of the budget, which takes place, as I said, every year with the council, um, what additional oversight do you want to propose? And I think you kind of answered that a little bit in, in the previous question with our follow-up, but what would, do you think further needs to be done other than just that um, yearly budget justification, just like any other <coughs> department? It, in other words, 
Muskogee Media goes through a budget justification and a budget hearing just like any other department. Um, why would the news agency need to be have more oversight? Well, in the original legislation from 2015, the editorial board was given the managerial responsibility. After the um, original bill um, was rescinded, we, we talked to attorneys and other journalism experts who felt that the editorial board should deal with the news content decision making of the news media portion. That the daily management really shouldn't be uh, a responsibility of an editorial board. The editorial board should be answering the questions of, you know, does, it, does this meet the standards of the national, uh, national journalism standards and, and other questions that arise in the publication of papers and, and um, in video. So in the substitute bill that I had sent over to the council, I broke those two off because we still have a need for oversight. We established Muskogee Media as an independent agency with an editorial board with the exclusive responsibility of working with the staff and looking and assisting with the questions that arise with news reporting. The um, resource committee would look at the business side of Muskogee Media and on a quarterly basis as an independent agency they would appear before the National Council as does about every other independent agency and we I feel that that is the proper oversight that we have. It's a joint responsibility between me and the National Council, and we just want to make sure that that um, oversight is there, that they have an opportunity to come and report, just as other independents do, to tell us how things are going, what the needs they have, issues they may have. We haven't had that um, dialogue in the past. Uh, uh Another objection, uh, and, and it dealt with the editorial board specifically and who sits on it um, that you had, is it doesn't address the possibility of there being no enrolled Muskogee Creek citizens being both available and meeting the specific requirements to serve on the editorial board. That was word for word from your uh, objection. Um, board requirements as previously established allows for two MCN citizens and one non-citizen. Um, is your plan to increase the number of board seats available to non-citizens, or in other words, do you have any concerns that possibly creating a board, uh, this would create a board where non-citizens outnumber MCN citizens? The intent of the editorial board and its membership um, has gone through several iterations. We, at one point, we we're looking at just open to people in the state of Oklahoma, but uh, in talking again to um, legal experts and journalism experts, it's going to be hard to do that. And so we expanded that to be um, Creek citizens, at least two, and, um, and then opened that up and dropped the restriction that they must reside within the state of Oklahoma. We desire that they do because I think the involvement would be better, but understanding the reality, we may have to go beyond the state. You don't have any fear that that would compromise the board with more non-citizens? No, I think um, the other thing that um, needs to be corrected is that we didn't have staggered positions in the past, and um, at, even if the bill had remained in, or the law had remained in place, all three of the original editorial board members would have had to leave this month, according to the original legislation. So we would be without today if we were sitting here and the law was still in place. Uh, Chief, in previous coverage and in a memo that you released to the citizens, uh, you expressed a trust in the National Council's, uh, Council's decision regarding this specific matter. Uh, now you're vetoing a majority decision from the Council mm -hmm. revolving this, uh, involving this matter. Uh, I wonder if you can explain why. Well, I th the main thing that um, arose during the last, I think, December legislation was they the council felt they didn't have time to look at the substitute that I had sent over. Um, I've had discussions with the national council members since then, um, and so there's validity in the substitute bill. They'd like to take that up, but 
the fact that they passed and restored a bill that wasn't workable resulted in me providing a return of that legislation to them. And um, I still feel optimistic that we can arrive at something that's going to be suitable for everyone. Because I think at the end of the day, we still have the same objectives. We still want to provide good communication to our citizens and the public. But we want to make sure that we're being good stewards of tribal money because we have you know, more than a one and a half million dollars annually going in there and that's significant because there's always a tension of where money's going and what it's being used for so we want to make sure that we assure everybody that we're doing a good job with the resources that we have and uh, so i think there's i think there are general agreement on the substitute bill and so what i'm looking forward to is the to go and make the final adjustments that we need to and work with the council and get something passed. I still remain committed to open um, and independent media and as in the letter I sent the other day, um, you know, I've not been involved in any decision making on any story at any time since the bill uh, has changed and I don't plan to. I want it to remain independent. I want them to use the judgment that they have in, in putting out news to our citizens. Uh, I just want to make sure that we have an accountable framework. And that's it. And um, I think we can get there. I think we can have something everybody be proud of. And we've had the time to look at other uh, newspapers and media products from other tribes. We're looking at trying to pick from some of the best and, and bring forward those ideas so that we can expand the offerings that we have to our citizens. You mentioned speaking with some council members, and this is un undoubtedly, and we've seen it, uh, a polarizing issue within the council. There's some that are on one side of it, one on the other side of it. I wonder if you've talked with the co-sponsors of NCA 18-184, uh, uh, being those uh, you know wanting to reverse the decision or mm -hmm. you know, put forth a new one that would restore free press. Can you talk about um, if you've had any conversations with those council members and what have those discussions been like? Um, I had a conversation with two of the four, I think just four people involved, and um, they have looked at the substitute bill, they've kind of marked it up with their own thoughts. Um, we just need to get together and again come to a, a common agreement on the substitute going forward and I think then we'll have some closure of that. Um, again, at the end of the day, our objectives are still the same. It's, I think some people have gotten caught up in the narrative that's been going on of, you know, revoking freedom of the speech and free, free press. We've not done that. And we've put into place a structure that helps solidify that. And in my opinion, and I think it's voiced by a number of the council members, accountability that we're all being called to task for, both me and the National Council members. And so we all feel the same questions. We're just trying to come to a solution that um, is a better path forward than what we've had in the past. Um, Chief, the, the majority of the talks that we've had with you uh, regarding this bill, or that we've seen you release regarding this issue itself, has been about structure, uh, funding, stewards of the money, things like that. However, there has been, and the night of the emergency session, there has been National Council members say there's too much negative press in the paper. Uh, we need more positive stories in the paper. Is that something that you agree with or that you look at as an, be a reason that would need a change like this? Or do you reject that notion that just because something may be negative, it shouldn't be allowed in a tribal newspaper? In my personal opinion, um, whether something's positive or negative doesn't concern me. You know, in this position, it, you know, it's understood. What concerns me is that it be verifiable, fact-based, truthful, then it should go out. I mean, at, at this stage, with me as the principal chief and those council members, if, if we're so sensitive to something being negative, then, you know, we need to recheck our own values. I, I don't worry about that. Um, that comes with the territory that we have, again, but we need to make sure that what's being reported is being truthful and meets some standards, and we've outlined that in the substitute bill. All right. Um, is there anything you'd like to add that I haven't covered so far? Uh, no, I think the one thing that's important, 
I know that people have said, well, this came so suddenly. But you know, this goes back to the time, even with, you've mentioned the budget discussions, the budget hearings. We had some concerns about the growth of the budget and what the budget consisted of and what the money was going for. Um, I've expressed concerns to the National Council on a couple other issues between that time and the time that the action was taken by the National Council. So, you know, we've had some concerns. Those have been expressed to the National Council. Um, so, it may have been surprised to the public, but, um, you know, within the representatives and myself, we had some concerns that. Um, all of much which I can't go into detail about that really needed to be addressed and so I, I know that you know things have gone suddenly in the last couple of months but I think it's the result is we have uh, a basis for a good media service for the Muscogee Creek Nation going forward. Oh and Chief the, the one last thing I did want to ask you is that when you said um, you said you know to this point, um, the narrative may have been free speech and an end of it and everything like that, and to this point you most certainly have not. Um, we did see a letter to the editor, or uh, basically a, uh, a letter in the newspaper from um, current Muskogee media leadership that indicated that there is a process now where stories do go to Secretary McIntosh um, and to, to verify facts, things like that, everything like that. Um, was that something that you mandated, or was that something that was brought upon by Secretary McIntosh? Well, the legislation that uh, was passed in November assigned the Muskogee Media to the, to the Department of Commerce, of which Eli McIntosh is the secretary. So it is his responsibility. I think the misnomer is that he's looking over every word and, you know, in looking at every I guess a story that's going out uh, even as late as today when I spoke to him um, he's not we have other things that go on you know Skogie Media is one segment of the of the nation we have other things going on he just doesn't have the time if he desired to do that um, the editor of the paper has you know, full responsibility and I would suggest that if any citizens have any questions, they feel there's any, any concerns regarding censorship or lack of free speech, to contact the editor of Muskogee Media and um, talk to her directly. Muskogee Media also spoke to Travis Scott, MC and National Council Representative for Oak Fusky District, Seat B, and a co-sponsor of the bill to reinstate free press at MCN. The, uh, Jason, the, the intent of changing um, the legislation itself, I think, could have had some better parameters before it got to the point where we are now. Um, I didn't like the way it was presented uh, in an emergency uh, extraordinary session uh, at the time, uh, not with the full council being present, um, also with the sponsor not being there. Uh, I didn't feel like it was adequate enough to to pursue and, and, and make a decision uh, on that piece of legislation at that time. Um, I, I feel like that uh, there could have been some uh, uh, issues handled differently with the council, the uh, executive branch, with the editorial board, and, and tried to come to a, a, a happy medium with resolving those issues rather than uh, proposing a bill to uh, retro and repeal uh, the way w the, at, the, at, the, at the point where we are now. Can you talk about some of the dialogue or conversations that you've had with some of your colleagues that are on the other side of this issue than you are or and or the principal chief and how satisfied you are with the outcome of some of those conversations? Yes, uh, if you recall in the in the meeting that evening when we um, the the legislation was proposed, uh, I'd asked several questions in regards to um, the bill being presented, and I still aren't I'm not comfortable with the answers that was given because it doesn't justify in in the bill being repealed and removed uh, to where it is now. Um, I feel like that the uh, uh, the the uh, not necessarily the opposing um, uh, voters of the legislation, but if funding was an issue, um, which that has been expressed 
uh, many times in, in conversations. Uh, I think back in 2015 when the bill was, was originally proposed and ratified 14 to 0, um, that issue should have been proposed at the time on how we're going to pay for it. And now all of a sudden it, it is an issue. So it's hard for me to, to grasp the, uh, the intent uh, right now uh, of funding being an issue. Um, we've had, as I said, two sides of it come out basically where Principal Chief has said this is a structural issue. Uh, the previous bill was flawed. This is nothing more than taking it back and now reproposing something that fixes some of the flaws, such as structure, such as accountability, such as financial oversight, things like that. I get that, and that's understandable. However, the night of the emergency session, when discussion went around the table, um, and it wasn't refuted then at all as something that wasn't part of this action. Uh, it was said, there's too much negativity in the newspaper. We got to have more positive stories in the newspaper. From your standpoint, then, is it hard for you, because of hearing that, to just accept the fact that that's not what this is really about, or at least a large part of it, rather than just saying, hey, we need to restructure a flawed bill? I mean, what do you think about that? I'll give you an example. Um, about 30 days ago, if you recall, uh, the President of the United States had removed a member of the media uh, because of certain issues, uh, an anchor uh, slash uh, reporter. And he was reinstated. Um, um, so, you know, at the same time, the, the negativity is part of the news, regardless of who the story is about, regardless of the individual it's about. Um, you wake up every day when you watch television uh, and see nothing but news, whether it's positive or negative. Um, that is the duty of um, the media itself to to run those stories. That is facts. Um, I don't feel like we should we should dictate what can be printed, what cannot be printed. Um, I feel like that that's the the citizens um, that that is how they get informed. Uh, we as council members, when we go to community meetings, we inform them of legislation. We inform them of issues. However, there is some things that we cannot inform them of. Uh, so that is our that is our job. My job is not to tell the the Muskogee media that they have the ability to print or not print something that is factual. Um, is what you've seen as a substitute bill. Um, and what's been discussed here in, in work sessions, in um, reintroductions, things like that, and now a veto. Um, we, ne we now look to go to maybe a vote on that veto override or not. Um, is everything that's been presented, is there anything that's been presented as far as in a substitute bill, in your mind, um, a, a greater outcome than just putting it back to what it was before November 8th? The proposed substitute bill, um, from what I from what I have seen, um, adds a extra committee. Um, I, I feel that uh, adding that extra committee uh, without any jurisdictional uh, or any um, managerial decision making uh, seems like it. Uh, I think some of the issues are communication barriers, uh, like I've said before. Um, we as council members. Uh, whether it's the BF&J committee, LNC committee, whatever falls under our jurisdiction, if we have any any uh, disputes or any um, uh, ideas that come to the committee uh, presented to the council or the administration, uh, we address those with those appropriate boards. And then if further steps need to be taken, then, then we can take them. But I think that's the way that we should work as a nation uh, to through those processes, whether they're independent or they're under the, the under the legislative branch or the executive branch, uh, try to mend those fences and and try to make make those problems solved, worked, rather than just making a hasty decision and, and trying to do legislation to 
uh, to accommodate our needs immediately. We spoke with the principal chief and he indicated that there had been concerns from his office leading up to November 8th when their emergency when the emergency session did take place. Um, he even said that, that the, some of those concerns were uh, related to the council and there was almost a uh, you know a a sense of this was going to come up on November 8th. You as a council member, what was your awareness of this emergency session and really the fact that you all were going to be seeing a repeal of um, the, what had previously been the Muskogee Media Free Press Act? Um, what was your prior knowledge of that before that emergency session took place? You know, I've, I've completed my first full year uh, being back on the council. I was gone for eight, eight years and um, when when this proposal came up, um, me personally, I did not have any recollection of any concerns, uh, of anything that uh, was uh, of, of great magnitude that we needed to address it immediately. Um, some of my fellow council members uh, had said that, you know, there had been talks uh, in years past, a couple of years ago before I got back on, uh, but uh, nothing was ever done at that time. And so now that it being an election year and this comes about to try to repeal and replace, uh, the perception of it to me is uh, it makes the whole nation uh, not look very good. Um, that's the perception of the citizens as well. From many phone calls, conversations that I've had, uh, you know, there's a lot of concern about what are you trying to hide? Uh, you know, what, do this, what does the nation not want us to know? Um, and like I expressed earlier, you know, we try to give all of the information we can to our individuals at community meetings, uh, whether it's functions, um, anytime they call, email. So I didn't have any recollection uh, other than uh, there was some discussion about addressing a media bill. Um, we had got it the day before and uh, we addressed it the following night. Um, and, and I'm still adamant about, uh, about replacing the way the media should have, uh, should be to repeal it like we're trying to override the veto now. Uh, and then come together with the editorial board, uh, the legislative branch, the executive branch, and, le and let's sit down and see if we can't rectify the problem. Uh, let's, let's actually sit down and, 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 and go through all of the concerns by the legislative branch, the executive branch, uh, and address those with the editorial board and, and see if we can't work this out. Um, I, that's, that's the focus for me as an individual for a representative for my district and I think that's the focus of some of the other representatives that are in favor of trying to override the veto as well. I'm good. Liz, do you got anything? Okay. okay. Thank you. Anything else you want to add? I have one comment. Okay, go ahead. The last thing I, I would like to address is, um, you know, after the first bill was proposed, um, there was a memorandum uh, sent out uh, to employees and to the nation uh, in regards to uh, why the principal chief had signed the legislation that night when it was approved. Uh, the memorandum basically stated that the principal chief supported what the National Council had approved that night. Uh, and now that we have approved a repealer, uh, I, I, I am caught in a uh, discussion to figure out what changed when the vote was seven to six, I believe, at that time. And now the vote is the nine to five with the full council present. And uh, why, why the uh, support is not there to repeal it and replace and to try to work these things out. Um, so. That, uh, that is concerning for me uh, as far as, uh, you know, who's to say that the, uh, uh, the, nine, the nine voters that voted yes for the repealer for the veto override now, uh, uh, what, what has changed in the confidence level of the seven that voted the previous time to change it? So 